Hi everyone. Today I wanted to talk about a 1960 film that's in the Criterion Collection. It's called La Verite. It stars Brigitte Bardot, Charles Bonnell, Paul Marisa, Sammy Craig, and it is a uh, courtroom drama. And we begin the film in the courtroom and then we have extended flashbacks um, that are spaced throughout the t various testimonies. The testimonies um, trigger the flashbacks, but they're not actually seen from the viewpoint of the person giving the testimony. Uh, the courtroom is a very confined, kind of trapped space. Uh, it's um, it's uh, the uh, Charles Vanell plays the defense attorney. He sits down almost like in a pit. Uh, the judge sits up high, uh, and he he has various judges on each side of him. Prosecutor also sits up high, um, and then there's Paul Marisa playing a um, another uh, sort of quasi prosecutor. He is there to defend the rights of the the victim. The victim's mother hires him. It took me a while to figure out what was going on because it's much different than an American courtroom drama. Um, and the de and. And the um, defendant, Bridget, Bridget Bardot, she's up high as well, and she's standing, and she's sort of in the in a witness uh, uh, position throughout. And she's interrogated by the judge, not by the prosecutor. Um, and this this is it has a different feel to it than say a movie like Anatomy of a Murder, which is a kind of a similar kind of story where we we're trying to get to the truth of a murder. Uh, Charles Vanell is going to um, plead uh, a crime of passion, which in France would get you off, uh, wouldn't get you off, but it would mitigate the, the length of your sentence. In, um, in Anatomy of a Murder, it was irresistible impulse. <laughs> uh, the defense that Jimmy Stewart comes up with within, within Anatomy of a Murder, <clears throat> it's more about the performance art of Jimmy Stewart the defense attorney and George C. Scott, uh, the prosecutor, and there's a big area, like a stage area almost, where they, uh, they, they practice their performance art. Um, so it has much more, uh, it, there's much more open feel, and here you really get the sense of, uh, of doom and judgment, and uh, whether we're in the idea of of um, trying to understand what Bardot did, and if we understand it, can we then judge her, or should we judge her without trying to understand her? And uh, there's um, there's uh, um, a um, there, there's an aspect of the movie that not only is Bridget Bardot being tried, but because she she is playing sort of a modern woman, uh, sexual freedom. Uh, she, it, it's a whole patriarchy uh, coming down hard on women having this this type of freedom, being sexually aggressive with uh, uh, with her partners and not being the pursued. And we even bring up it's even brought up that um, as a teenager she had read, read Simone Bouvier's uh, uh, novel The Mandarins, which was quite controversial and. Uh, that this had an influence, and, and Du Bavier, uh, she uh, defended the movie and defended uh, Bridget Bardot's, and uh, because her book was was brought up, and of course she was famous for her um, for her feminist books in general. Um, and we so we we get a sense of who is she is she, we, very much a sense of. Um, the relationship of the of her victim, her and her victim, and it and it kind of plays into the relationship that was in Mano about ten years earlier. Uh, Clouseau's brilliant uh, updating of Mano de la Scow, um, novel from I think the 17th century, uh, and and he updated it just brilliantly to the post-war era. Uh, it's it's. Um, and, and it has that kind of, it, it doesn't have quite the sadomasochistic kind of relationship that's uh, in that film, but um, that really is, a, it's an interesting depiction of that, of that type of relationship, which seemed to be um, a kind of, the type of relationship that Clouseau was very much interested in.
and I would also say that the the transfer on this is fantastic. I mean, this is stupendous. If you like black and white, you can see the Twitter. This is Blu-ray, it's not, you know, UHD. I can't imagine it looking much better in UHD, perhaps it can, but to me, this was just a fantastic black and white look. So if you like black and white um, uh, cinematography and films in black and white, uh, this would be one that you might want to get. Um, it's, it doesn't have a, a, a commentary, and I thought, boy, there's such a story to this to this movie because it's um, Bridget Bardot being a serious actress. She had played sex kitten roles. She had um, lightweight. She had one movie right before this where she was um, she played a more dramatic role, but here she really has to pull out the stops. She has to be a real full-fledged dramatic actress in this film. And uh, I think she did great. I mean, amazing. Well, it's up there with her turn in Jean-Luc Godard's uh, contempt um, as far as you know, her uh, ability to show some emotion other than just her sex appeal because she certainly, you, there's no, <laughs> this is not Clouseau, uh, doesn't show her sex appeal. She certainly shows it in this movie and, and uh, the results of that appeal uh, whether and how close the role of, uh, that she's playing in this movie, how close it is to the to the Bridget Bardot character, the celebrity, the, the uh, um, you know the, the, the uh, she was a phenomenon, uh, a celebrity phenomenon. Everything about her was photographed, and um, newspapers were just full of uh, Bridget Bardot news. Um, so even though we don't get a um, a commentary, which I think would have really enhanced the appreciation of this film. We do get a about a 50 minute documentary called La Scandal Cluzo, and this is from 2017. It has a lot of good information about him and the dark view he had of life, and there's no denying that Cluzo had a really dark view, and certainly in this film it comes out. But he had, he had spent four years, when he was in his 20s, he spent four years in a sanitarium, and not really knowing if he was ever going to get better, um, and certainly, uh, in they read some diary uh, excerpts where where he expresses that deep despair. Uh, and there's lots of great interviews, including one with Susie Dallaire. She had been in a uh, early, uh, or uh, I think a couple films with uh, with Cluzo and was his companion for a while, and, and she lived to 102. She just died uh, uh, last year, I think. Um, and she says something interesting about him. She says that uh, his his biggest weakness as an artist was that he lacked imagination. <laughs> and you wonder, how, how could a film director lack imagination? But uh, she said that he was totally dependent on others for the ideas for his movies, and that he would listen to everybody, and, and uh, that's a good idea, that's not a good idea. And she also brought up how, how much he would uh, research his films to uh, give them an authentic look. Uh, so there's always a part documentary feel to his film. So if, if we're sitting in a French courtroom, you can almost be guaranteed, even though it's not mentioned in the supplements, that that French courtroom was exact, exactly what a French courtroom uh, would look like in, in 1960. Then we get a documentary on Bridget Bardot uh, and her relationship with Clouseau. Uh, it was, it was, uh, it, it had been portrayed as stormy <laughs> and, uh, you know, she, she viewed uh, Clouseau as, as a really dark force, you know, there was just something, you know, really scary about the man himself. Uh, but she didn't deny how talented he was, and I, th I think she said in, in, in later uh, interviews that this is her performance in uh, La Verité is, is, she, is her favorite, and she thinks her best performance. Um, and also, uh, and as part of clouseau Bardot onset relationship, it's, a, it's famous for uh, Clouseau slapping Bardot, uh, and then Bardot slapped him back, it's, it's questionable who stomped on whose foot, but Bardot uh, left the set, uh, and, but then, uh, you know, they made it up, uh, and, and, and Cluzo never did that again with her and treated her with uh, uh, the kind of respect that she thought she deserved. Uh, but they do have a, 
there, there's also in the, in the midst of all these interviews, there's one with Bernard Blier, who had been in many, had been in earlier uh, Clouseau movies. He's not in this one, uh, not in La Verite, <clears throat> but he said that was a common practice for Clouseau. He, he would um, he, that he himself had been slapped by <laughs> by Clouseau when he did this to create this nervous energy, this this intensity on the set, which he thought would enhance the performances and, and therefore the movie itself. And it also, um, Bardot talks about how in, in the movie, her, her lover is played by uh, Stephen Frey, and off screen, they, they also uh, became lovers, and this would create a big scandal. She was still married um, and had recently had a son by her husband. Uh, so a big scandal again after the movie was over and Sammy Frey, I think, was went to his military service. Uh, she, uh, Brigitte Bardot, uh, tried to commit suicide, uh, which is what her character in the movie uh, is always doing from the time she is a teenager. And she was accused, likewise, with the character that you're, you're doing that because you know you're going to be caught. It's just a, a ploy for... Uh, for attention and, and to get your way. Um, and then another, su uh, uh, another supplement is an interview with Clouseau himself, and this is uh, from around 1960, but it's way too short, but he does talk about La Verite and uh, how it was a, this particular storyline had been in a much different form intended for Sophia Loren, uh, but uh, Clouseau had a couple of uh, of uh, commercial flops. Uh, Bardot was as hot a property as they could be. Uh, the producer wanted him to do this project with Bardot, but then they had to change the whole uh, emphasis of the movie all around. Um, and uh, Clouseau was uh, attracted to the Bardot kind of recklessness of life. It, it really played into the character itself. Um, but he makes a really uh, uh, really spirited defense of Bardot because the interviewer is being, oh, you had to take an actor, you didn't, you had to, you were forced to take Bardot and you can, and she had to do this. There's one scene that's just amazing in the film where she's so emotional and, and uh, she says in her interview, I, I, we did that in one take because an experienced actress, she could do it and then do it again and do it again until it was, you know, right. But she said for myself, I had to do it in that one take. So Cluzo says, you know, he very much defends Bardot and says that uh, of course she's a good actress and, and she gave a terrific performance in the in in the uh, in the movie. And then we get a, a fold out, and the, there's uh, a few few pretty good pictures uh, from from the movie. Uh, that's Charles Vanell down in the uh, right hand corner there, and and Vanell is really good in this movie. I he doesn't have enough to do when you at kind of in the courtroom drama you know he's playing the Jimmy Stewart uh, Charles Lawton from witness for the prosecution type part and uh, I mean he's one of my favorite actors uh, of all time and then on the other side of the fold out we have a pretty pretty extensive um, essay and this essay um, is by Jeanette Vin Vindendo, and she has written a couple books on, on Bardo, and, and so she gives you a lot of information, some of it you've already seen in the supplement, because it was so, it was had such a famous uh, uh, history to it, uh, La Verite, uh, but it's, it's a pretty good in, uh, interview. So all in all, just a, uh, like I say, a glorious black and white um, uh, 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 picture quality to it. Uh, Bardot is, I think, fantastic. There's some good supporting actors in it. It's a very interesting story. Um, if you like courtroom dramas in particular, this, this is a good one there as well. Okay, so that about wrap this one up. Thanks, as always. Appreciate everybody who stuck with me. Um, you know, any comments would be welcome and responded to. If not, uh, you guys take care, and I will catch you next time.